Hey y'all, it's meteorologist Erica Lopez. I'm at the Storm Prediction Center located in Norman, Oklahoma, where I talked to Liz Lightman, the first woman to issue a watch at the Storm Prediction Center. Here's what she had to say. What was your path to the Storm Prediction Center? And congratulations on being the first woman to issue a watch. Thank you so much. So my path to the Storm Prediction Center started obviously whenever base, I, I was in high school, really. Uh, it was a dream job for me. Um, ever since I was very young. And so once I decided I'm gonna be a meteorologist, I applied to school at the University of Oklahoma and I attended and earned my degree in meteorology from the School of Meteorology. While I was at OU, I volunteered at the Norman National Weather Service office and that gave me a lot of background in the job. Um, you know, help me network and meet people and, uh, you know, learn more about what the Weather Service does. That, that was a really good opportunity to kind of get my foot in the door as a student. Once I graduated and had my degree, um, I immediately applied for jobs in the Weather Service and I was hired at the National Weather Service in Billings, Montana. And so I spent about two years there. Um, and then I was promoted as a forecaster at the National Weather Service office in Louisville, Kentucky and I spent about a year and a half there before a job opening um, was announced at the Storm Prediction Center, and I applied for that, got it, and the rest is history. <laughs> Being a woman, there's so many things that go on, but it's a big deal for me, at least. You know, I, like you, I grew up loving severe weather, loving weather, and to see a woman at the Storm Prediction Center is a really big deal. Can you first tell us how do you feel about being the first woman to issue a watch? It's very exciting. Um, you know, it, like I said, I wanted to work for the Storm Prediction Center since I was in high school. And so it's kind of like, you know, one of those career moments where, you know, if I told 15 year old Liz that this was actually going to happen, she, she wouldn't have believed you. And so it's just very exciting um, to be able to do it, to be the first woman um, in the position to be able to do it. I'm just really excited that I had the opportunity. I think there's not a lot of understanding what goes on behind the scenes and why it took tw oh, till 2023 for the first woman to issue a watch. There's a lot of compounding factors. You already mentioned, you know, meteorology has historically been a male dominated field. Uh, that's changing a lot even since I started uh, professionally in the weather service in 2006. There's more women than ever, um, but it's taken time for us, you know, to make those gains. At the Storm Prediction Center, the lead forecaster has sole responsibility for issuing those watches. And there are only five lead forecasters who do that for the entire country. And so the position in itself is pretty exclusive. Once people are in those positions, they don't leave very often. And so most of our lead forecasters end up having like 15 to 25 years of experience by the time they retire from that position. Um, and so those opportunities don't come along very often. Also in about the 70 year history of the Storm Prediction Center, we've only had around 36 lead forecasters. So it's really like three generations of lead forecasters. And so it's just taken a lot of time, um, you know, to, to get here to this point because those positions are so limited. Well, congratulations. Mm -hmm. Still, you're such an inspiration, I know, for all the women who are in the field, and especially for me being an OU alum, just like you. This is great. <laughs> um, so I just want to know a little bit more about your shift. What does it entail? You said that you work overnights as well. Can you explain a little bit about your job duties? Sure. So weather never sleeps, so we don't either. <laughs> We're here 24-7, 365. Um, and so that entails shift work. And typically we work about seven shifts in a row uh, before we get a few days off. And we'll rotate through day shifts, evening shifts, midnight shifts, um, so we work them all. Um, and then we have various desks within the Storm Prediction Center. So we have our lead forecaster desk whose sole responsibility again is issuing those watches. We have a mesoscale desk, which is kind of like the wing person to the lead forecaster. And they're looking at short-term severe potential and writing technical discussions about what we're expecting over the next few hours, how severe threats are going to evolve, is a watch going to be needed, um, those kinds of things. And then our outlook forecaster is doing those longer term forecasts for the next 24 hours and then out through eight days. 
And so our outlooks um, highlight our risk areas. So you may be familiar with you know, the terms like slight, enhanced, moderate, high risk. Um, those are our convective outlooks. And those we highlight what we're expecting as far as tornado, damaging wind, and hail threats for the week ahead. There's not a lot of women in the field. Could you explain a little bit about the difficulties moving around and anything that, any hardships you ran into being a woman in the National Weather Service? I would say, you know, some of the challenges really began even in college. Uh, as a freshman, signing up for classes, my advisor told me that they did not think that I would make it through the program and that I should choose another major. Um, and so really kind of the, the barriers kind of, you know, started right there. But I was very determined. I knew what I wanted. And so, you know, I did it anyway. Once I was really in the weather service, the agency has been really supportive and it's been a wonderful place to work. I haven't really felt a lot of barriers other than uh, it's very difficult. You know, as you mentioned, you move around a lot um, in the weather service and we do shift work, which is very taxing. I have two small kids and so that has been a huge challenge trying to balance, you know, being a mom and a shift worker, and that's probably been the biggest hurdle for me. I would just say to any girls um, who are interested in meteorology or even you know, STEM science fields in general, because women are underrepresented in those fields, um, but if any are interested, I would say you know, you know what you're capable of, you know what you're passionate about, don't let anyone determine your path, so go for it and there are women in those positions who are doing it and will be here for you. Thank you so much. Congratulations again on being the first woman to issue a Storm Prediction Center watch. It's such a big win for us women in the field. Thank you so much. <laughs>